Do you know me, my lord? Excellent. Excellent. Well, you are a fishmonger. Not I, my lord. Then I would you were so honest a man. Honest, my lord? Ah, to be honest, as this world goes to be one man picked out of 10,000. That's very true, my lord. It is, it is pretty clear from, you know, being assistant to the king, uh, sort of his chief advisor, uh, that, that at least in Elizabethan times was not a, a, an easy job to come by. You didn't just apply for it, you, you, you worked your way up. His role as a politician is his life, which is one of the reasons he has such a difficult time with his kids. There is no Mrs. Polonius. There's no reference to go and see your mother. There's no reference to her in any sense. So I think he is, is uh, fairly recently come into being a full-time parent in addition to uh, his, his official capacity. And that's where he gets mixed up when he's trying to, to balance the two. Uh, part of the reason, I think, also that he's eager to work with uh, the king and the queen is the fact that he is able to dispatch his own duties as, as advisor, but then also kind of look out for his interests in terms of uh, keeping Ophelia and Hamlet separate. My lord, I have remembrances of yours. I have long, long to be delivered. I pray you now to receive them. Oh, no. Since I have been in the I never gave you one. He's so awful to her. He uses Ophelia to transmit his bogus information to Polonius and thus to Claudius. It's just one more step in that game of telephone. Um, yeah, one more tiny manipulation. I loved you not. Get thee to a drink. Ophelia, at the beginning of the play, she is just a young girl who's very much in love with Hamlet. And then she keeps getting warned against him. And her, her father actually makes her promise him not to see him anymore and to, um, to stop him from sending these letters. And she, she begrudgingly uh, agrees to do so because she has to obey her father. If you make the choice that she has slept with Hamlet, she has put herself in a very precarious position because now that he's off and gone, Claudius has sent him away, she is ruined. Uh, she has given up her honor to him and he has turned it turn it back on her. And then in the middle of his kind of betrayal of Ophelia by, you know, giving her all this bogus information and being all crazy and, and uh, being really awful to her, he kind of realizes that not only is Ophelia telling Polonius everything that Hamlet tells her, but she has allowed Polonius to watch a conversation between them. And then, he get, and then he gets very hurt, which is really, it, it's really pretty ridiculous. Speak, man. Leave my father. He's dead. But not by him. Laertes is coming in demanding answers from Claudius about his father's death, about his, his speedy and almost unhonorable burial, uh, and why Hamlet has not been... Um, uh, justly punished for these deeds. He's there for Claudius' coronation and he just basically says, I want to go back to France now, I'm tired, I want to go back and do what I was doing. He comes back home to find that his father's been murdered and he's come back also to discover that not only was it Hamlet who killed his father, but that his sister is now rambling and muttering and they're calling her pretty much insane and the next moment she drowns, you know, so he has all these things to come back to Denmark uh, to what it's initially supposed to just be to bury his father. Hamlet, he comes across Ophelia's awful little burial and he's guilty and he's, he's dumbstruck. He doesn't know what to do. He did love this woman. He did want to marry this woman, mine did. He did want to marry this woman. And everything just got screwed up, dumbfounded, and guilty is how, is how he is in that moment. Whose phrase and sorrow conjure the wandering stars and make them stand like wonder wounded heroes? Laertes and Hamlet are at each other's throats on stage. Laertes grabs him by the neck in the tax. 
You know, Hamlet's yelling, take thy hands from my throat. They are so heated up, they're ready to kill each other right there. And it seemed really weird to break up that intensity and that anger when everything centers on the gravesite and the anger that boils at finally seeing Hamlet. You don't think that in real life that a natural character would see the murder of his father and, you know, someone who's maybe responsible indirectly for his sister's death. You see them and then all of a sudden there's a reason, you know, to wrap their hands around their throat and try to choke them and then break and say, no, but we're gentlemen, we'll do this in a dual fashion. We didn't think that would be, you know, our version especially wouldn't be appropriate to try to even stage something that would allow that anger to reach that level and then let the audience down by going, but we'll wait till later. I think a lot of people in a contemporary audience really come to see some specific things. They come to see the soliloquies, they come to see Hamlet and Gertrude, the nunnery scene, the gravedigger scene, and the duel, you know, and with, alongside a couple of other things, but let's get to it. Claudius does a very good job at calming Laertes down and assuring him that they are both on the same side in their intent to do harm to Hamlet. And so they come up with a couple of plans, um, such as uh, they will get into a battle, a fencing battle, or uh, in this show, just a, a fight with, with daggers. And one of those blades will be poisoned. Uh, Claudius being unconvinced that that is foolproof enough, he decides to have a backup plan, which is to have a goblet of wine filled with poison and offer it up to Hamlet during the fight so he would drink from it and die. And uh, that sets up the, the tragedy of the play. I show I am dead. Now this, report me and my cause is right to the unsatisfied. Never believe I'm more an anti-Roman than a Dane. The bond between Hamlet and Horatio um, is very, it's, it's beyond convention. It's beyond um, definition. It's one of those things where it's like your best friend, but to the nth degree. It, it goes f so far beyond that, that it really is almost like this ha Horatio would live and die by Hamlet. Hamlet's lesson or tragic flaw to himself is, is this inaction. He has the opportunity to, to kill Claudius and chooses not to. And if he had, you know, there's this whole question of does Claudius go to heaven or goes to hell or whatever it might be. Um, but what form of prayer can serve my turn? Forgive me my foul murder. That cannot be since I am still possessed of the effects for which I did the murder. My crown, my own ambition, and my queen. That, I think, is one of the most beautiful speeches in, in all of Shakespeare. How do I say I'm sorry for something? I regret it, but I'm not going to give up what I attained by committing this, this foul and unspeakable act. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to give up what I, what I got for it. And what do you do when you realize your mother still has a sex drive? When, you're, when you realize your mother still is the object of sexual desire? Hamlet seems to be one where everybody seems to be able to find something to chew on. Actors love it because of how many layers there are to the characters. Hamlet just seems bottomless. Like, I don't think I would ever get to the bottom of him. For reasons that we go back to it is because he is so human, because he is so alive, because he talks in ways that we all understand and we all have at some point thought about and talked about ourselves. I think beyond just kind of being the the Olympics for an actor, which I think is fun to watch, <laughs> just to see someone have 90% of the show. I think the journey, Hamlet's journey from being sort of just a sad son uh, into, you know, an angry man who, ne who needs revenge, who talks about it for like two hours and nothing really happens and nothing really happens. Um, and just that, that sort of drive and that anger into uh, a man who is resolved to actually get revenge. I think watching that arc is fascinating. The challenge that I have as a designer for shows like this that's been done many, many times over is just finding a way to make it your own and finding a way to make it different, even if it's just one tiny little way. Not to mention that it's a pretty good writer, <laughs> you know. And it's beautifully written. There are a lot of reasons. And it's beautifully written.